Hello and welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. Someone has stolen our throne. It's very weird. Like, our throne is gone. What's this? Another heavy shield? How did these get in here? Not entirely sure. Uh, okay. Well, we got some more stuff to sell as well. But yeah, someone has stolen our throne. Luckily, the first three people we need to speak to are, like, the traders, so we can sell our stuff, but... And, you know... It's it's awfully rude to steal the throne. I I kind of need it to sit sit on and people to give me things. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Right. Let's head out. Uh, let's go and speak to. I suppose we should speak to the captain of the guard first, who's up here, and then we'll speak to the traders. You're gonna walk around my way. I know you could walk on the the other way, but I've already started walking this way. You're not gonna walk back. It just looks silly. Hey, Yod, what's up? I see long time we haven't spoken. Anything? How may I serve you, your highness? It's hard to tell you this, but that vision that led you to the Stonelands was merely the trick of some wicked fay from the first world. Tristian told me already, your grace, looking like a beaten puppy all the while. I cannot say that this late confession brought me much solace. Damn it all! So what if a rascal didn't leave me here? I didn't do all this traveling for naught. And yes, I forgave Tristian, have no doubt of that. Last thing I need is to bear a grudge against that dunce. <laughs> See you later, Yacht. I forgot uh, how you spoke. Oh, there's no way up the stairs. The stairs don't work. You know what? I took this spell for a reason, and I'm going to use it. I have to have vision of it. All right, we'll walk around, whatever. You win, game. You win. At least we got to speak to Yod, which is something that we don't often get to speak to. Or someone we don't often get to speak to. Right. Around here, and I'm assuming the captain and the guard's still around here. Yeah, it's Highland, right? Ahead. Yeah. Hello. Why don't you explain why you're staring at me like that? Oh, uncle, when are you going to change that old armor? The magic beast crumpled it so badly it makes me cry to look at it. Oh, you still have a lot to learn. If only you knew how many times it saved my life in that battle. Greetings, your highness. Uh, Lindsay said it was you who discovered the throne was missing? The captain growls gloomily. Yes, your highness. He keeps silent for, uh, he keeps silent for a moment, then continues, obviously embarrassed. Actually, your highness, please don't think me a fool or a drunkard. As I walked to the throne room, at first I thought it was a vision. I didn't think much of it. Well, I thought I saw your throne in the corridor, and it was running away. Not by itself, of course. I didn't see who was carrying it. Perhaps someone really thin had gotten underneath it. And my, how they... Uh, how they ran. It seems the throne turned a corner by itself, but the sight was strange beyond belief, so I thought I was simply too tired and started seeing things. A moment later, when I discovered it was really missing, I rushed after it, but it vanished into thin air. Maybe it was, you know, magic. Well, I have to go. See ya. Hmm. Okay. So, he said it was taken by someone who was very, very small. Or, like, thin. I don't know. Either that or the throne has got a personality of, it o of its own and ran away. Which is very unlikely. Okay. Hasuf? Hello. Um, do you know where stolen goods are sold? Hasuf squints cunningly. How very polite you do not ask me directly. But no, I am not involved in such shady dealings. Although the local traders sometimes claim otherwise. Some say that uh, anything that's lying about will be stolen in this city. But then cannot be found for sale. You're not the first to ask after stolen goods. Many hope to find on the black market what precious things were stolen from their homes. But alas, it would seem the thieves have their own ways of getting rid of the stolen goods. Alright. We'll talk about stolen goods. I have a bunch of stuff to sell you. Um, Yeah, that. Oh, not the letter. I need that. Uh, that. Uh, everything else. Um, And actually... I go price descending. Yeah, this helmet and this full plate. Yeah, deal. And then I like the oh, as I sold it, that was very nice. Right. Um. Then name. We'll get ourselves a. Uh. Like 
300 of those? I don't know. I can actually get a little bit more. Usually I overshoot here. But I undershot this time. Yeah, that looks about like what I was wanting to spend. The path is clear. So we have a lot more BP now as well. Genova. Not that I have anything necessarily to spend it on, but anyway. Brutal. Have you heard about the thieves plaguing, uh, plaguing in the city? Or plaguing the city? I guess it should be. Heard, your highness. I am myself a victim of those thieves. Stole my tools right from under my very nose. I was in the backyard getting coal for the furnace when I heard some noise inside. I ran in and the thief jumped into a magic portal and vanished. Didn't even get a good look. <sighs> Bay. Ah, Bay. You know, I started this saying I was going to be a friend of the Fae. And you see where it's gotten me? You see where being a friend of the Fae has gotten me? They just constantly cause me trouble. Right. Not that I've been much of a friend to them, but you know. My intentions were good when I set out. They corrupted me. They, they corrupted it and made me vicious and angry. Let's head anyway, out. hello Alina. I guess we're too small to talk over the counter. Oh, welcome, Your Majesty, Your Highness. Why, why do I need to ask her about a rare book? I already know where it is. Anyway, I've heard there's a number of thefts in town. Do you know anything about it? Oh, of course I heard about it, Your Highness. Many houses have been robbed, and here, here's what's strange. No locked picks, no broken windows. How do the scoundrels get inside, huh? Ah, oh, those thieves are real masters of getting into other people's houses. They stand they steal whatever they find. One house they stole the silverware, another one they left money, but took children's toys. Strange thieves. Alright, I'll see you. Right. Um, I'll wait until the throne appears for sale. Really? Just wait? Okay. Well, it's another quest that says wait. You know, I'm starting to think that all the quests are going to say wait. Also, uh, I think that means that we're like 25 ex uh, thousand experience off leveling. Very, very close to being 25 exp thousand experience off leveling, but it's more like 26. Okay. Well, I'm still not going to go out and look. I think we're going to spend another bit inside. Like, we're going to spend another 14 days leveling up. Or is it? It's, it's 14, yeah. Uh, which should finish us... Three quests and to get Jathal's one finished, which is the one that allows us to reforge the blade for Amiri. So, you know, seems like a good one to do, basically. And that seems like a good time to leave. Hey, Mim. I like how we've got a little stool. That's actually very neat. Uh, thanks for the burning amulet. See you later. Right. I do like the very little stool that's replaced it. Burning Amulet? Adds four to the wearer's caster level when they cast Burning Arc, Burning Hands, Controlled Fireball, Fire Snake, Fireball, Firestorm, Fire Strike, Hellfire Ray, and Scorching Ray. <sighs> Here's the thing. It's trash. You might think, oh my god, that's amazing. But it's trash. It's absolutely, it's, this is garbage. Because of when we got it. If we got this when we were like level six... This would be amazing. This would be revolutionary. This would be 4d6 on every ability. But, because we got it now, it's zero. Well, actually, not entirely true. For for a Fire Snake, it's 1d6. But for a lot of them, it's zero extra d6. Which makes it trash. It makes it a nice thing to sell. Which is what we're going to do to it. Right, anyway. Quick save. Apparently we got more stuff in the capital. Um, yeah, so I've done my quick save, so I think we can do 14 days, yeah, of whatever we need to do. Lindsay is terrified, so that one's done. Right. Uh, I wanted to support espionage again. I guess I can't do that again. No. Okay, so who's free? We got Octavia, we got Tisana, and we got Keston and Jubilost. Tasana should be doing one of these. One of these curses. Yeah. Research into the nature of. Davic Nettle. Oh, we've already done Davic Nettle. Okay, yeah. Uh, we've, yeah, we've already discovered what's happened to Davic Nettle. Is that a trade agreement with Suratova? 
Yeah, it might be worth getting that. Well, well, I don't know. We'll see. Right. Research into Nate. I just clicked Navic Nettle again. You know, right, we'll go to the end. Scythe Tree. That, that storyteller. Navic Nettle. Jenna Tennyson. Yeah, 45 days to solve. Cost us a reasonable amount of BP. Do it. That's 45 days for Tisana. Which I think is worth setting up. Like getting a few of these out of our list. If nothing else, it makes the list easier to look at. Right, Keston. I don't think I want Keston to do anything in particular. Jubilost, I don't want him to do anything. Octavia, I don't want her to do anything in particular. So which one needs upgrading? So that is Jubilost, we can't upgrade. So Keston, the stability, I think that's our next one we upgrade. Yeah, stability. So he's called the... I forgot what his, his name is. As in, I forgot what his title is. Keston is the Warden. Of course, right. Do we have support the Warden? Yeah, support the Warden's endeavors. There we go. Keston. Let's do it. Uh, everyone else doesn't have a job to do, so that's fine. Right. Now we've got the sword to take back to the Six Bears tribe, and we've got ten events. That's a huge number of events we've got. Okay. Triumph. So we got community, military, and stability. Nice. Triumph again. we got loyalty. Success. Miri's sword was successfully reforged. Lovely. Keston skill. Uh, as an advisor, we can make him better. Ooh, and we don't even need to be here for that. That's very tempting. Warden needs your advice. Okay. Lindsay and the storyteller wait in the castle. The circus is here. There's drinking for Caden Salen's holiday. There's dead man's chest. There's protector of the weak. There's hands of gold. And there's forest fay. Alright, well, let's visit the throne room. Yeah, we'll go speak to the warden. And then Lindsay and storyteller. Oh, or the other way around. And then the queen, Soroceros, proudly said, Your evil deeds end now. Or is it better as we've uncovered your vile plan? Lindsay's trying to write something on the go, but she interrupts herself and looks up. Oh, your highness, we have unbelievably terribly important news. We managed to find out, discover, invent. Well, here. L Lindsay points to the storyteller. He'll tell you. The storyteller waits patiently until Lindsay finishes her ardent speech. I will have to begin from afar to tell you what I saw with my blind eyes. The stone lands are like a cradle in an abandoned house. In which the wind swings the skeleton of the child. No few newborn kingdoms have died here. Just after taking their first breath, I have collected the stories, these precious stars that have been lost in the dust, and I began to notice some commonalities. It is like a pattern that repeats across different embroideries, the handwriting of the same author across all the stories. One word here, another hint there. False visions, references to a mysterious patroness, lover, mentor, tragic coincidences. Strangely non-random, people and countries were brought to destruction along different roads, but behind them, there always stood the same ominous shadow. Uh, is this meant to be a reveal that Nyris is behind everything? Because we already know that. And we know that the shadow is Nyrissa! The name sounds ominous, even in the mouth of the restless bard. The evil nymph who sent monsters to our land and did all the stuff to Tristian. And that's not even the most important thing. Most importantly, if you help us a bit, we can get her. Oh, wait, wait, wait a sec, wait a second. We can get her? Let's start from the beginning. How did you even come up with this? Well, it all started from the fact that I really wanted to listen to the storyteller's stories. I've just been following him for a long, long time and asked and told him about our adventures and sometimes well, I sat beside him and we chatted and finally, after I told him about the Face Sisters and all the horrors of the abandoned castle, he noticed that the story seemed strangely similar to the ones he'd heard before. Well, what exactly were we going to do? Well, the bards know how to send messages through dreams. I, I try not to use it. For some reason, people get mad when I appeared in their dreams and tried to read my po new poems. Well, the storyteller came up with a ritual based on that spell. We collect everything collected to Narissa, everything, starting with every track in the abandoned castle. Uh, after gathering everything, we'll unite his ability to tell stories with my ability to travel into dreams, and, well, we'll be able to enter Nyrissa's dream. Do we still have the amulet for the string of hair that she gave you before the Battle of the Stag Lord? I do. That'd be great. That lets us finish all the preparations much faster and easier. Of course we still have it. 
Uh, what will we, and I'm very happy that he rewarded me for keeping it. Uh, what will we achieve by this? We'll learn all of her evil secrets. The ritual will let us see her hidden thoughts and dreams. Well, theoretically, it's not like anyone's ever done this before. It can be dangerous, the storyteller says quietly. In dreams, monsters are more terrible than those we meet in the real world. But I urge you not to neglect this chance, Queen. You're opposed by a powerful enemy. One who has destroyed dozens of kingdoms and empires. You do not meet her face to face. Do not discover her weakness. Says, your country will end up in just another of my stories. Well, I'll order you be provided with everything you need. Get me results. Come to me after we finish the preparations. Remember, I cannot send anyone except you and Lindsay into Nyvissa's dream world. Whatever you have to face, you will have to overcome together. And the path will likely be difficult. Interesting. Okay. Hey, Keston. Rumors are flying around the capital, your highness. The daughter of a well-born merchant, a well-known merchant, has gone missing. Some say she might have been kidnapped. Her father is calling on us to send every man and woman we have to go search for her. And promises he will generously repay the, his debt of gratitude. There are several reasons why we should accept his offer. I've learned he has friends in high places in the trade guild. Well, sure. We agree. A search for the merchant's daughter will be the guard's top priority. Have... Oh, wait. No, we gained 4,000 gold for doing it. Uh... Yeah. Do it. It shall be done, your highness. Keston uh, bows, holding his hand against his chest. We lose military, but we get stability. And we get crime fighters. Nice. Cool. Easy enough. Oh, hello. You got more leather working for me? Uh, yes. Yes, you do. Blessed hands. Thank you for your gift. Uh, are these gloves that allow you to cast bless? Uh, cloth worker? Okay. I expect a gift worthy of the favor you've been shown, I think, is what we want to say. Oh, no, she's the, uh, wait. Yeah, she's the weaponsmith. I appreciate the opportunity to make up for my estates. I assure you, I never exaggerate my skill when I refer to myself as the best weaponsmith. You'll see it for yourself very soon. Cool. So that was probably a dagger she gave us. Oh, yeah, punching dagger. 8 to 21, plus 5 enhancement. Destructive Agile Finesse Wielding. What? Okay, so that is... Well, Greater Shock is 2d6. Enhancement 5. Critical Multiplier of this weapon is increased by 1. And Agile, you can add the Dex bonus. But we already have that. Well, let me just have a look at Knock Knock here. So he's my first thought. He's currently using Edict and Mother's Care. So Edict's a plus 4. Breaker of Wills with Speed. What's Mother's Care? It's keen, is a keen, um, Kukuri, but actually doesn't have anything else on it. So if I give him Silent Whisperer, so it's for, it's Kukuri, sorry. Uh, so it's 22 damage, sorry, 22 attack, 14 to 21 damage. Okay. With a 15 to 20 critical. If I replace it. Okay, so it's 24 attack, 18 to 30, and then a 4 times 20 critical. So actually this one should replace Edict. Yeah, this one should replace Edict. And Mother's Care is still his best one. I think. Yeah. So this one crits a lot. And then this one, when it crits, it does a lot. Okay, so that now means I can sell Edict, probably. Oh no, e Edict should be used by... Yes. Should be used by Octavia. Because she uses daggers. As her secondary. Okay. Blessed Hands. Adds plus four to the wearer's caster level when they cast any cure spell. Well, that was easy enough. Right. Uh, right. Well, we might as well get our stuff for coming in here. Yeah. We've done that one. We got one stability. Nice. So we got crime fighters, apparently. What's crime fighters mean? Uh... Interesting. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I want to rank up Arcane maybe with that one then. 
Um, yeah, okay. Doesn't say for anything here. What we got here. That's fine. Uh, we do probably want to get more in relations as well. So we get some more BP per week. Is that 6 BP? 1 BP per week. Yeah, it's not that much. But anyway. Oh, it's one of these. Plus 4 to anything done by the Warden. Yep, start it. That's 14 days for Keston. I'll do a little uh, countdown as well here. So we have support the Warden's endeavors, which we don't need to do. And we have Wayne to Nyrissa's dreams. Both of them are busy. Storyteller is busy for quite a while. Uh, 28 days, I think. And Tisana is not available for 31 days. So yeah, they're both busy. But hopefully that'll li that, that will survive there. Hopefully that's not a thing that we've messed up. Uh, right. The only other thing we've got is two days for Lindsay. Okay. Right. Let's find the prob- Well, let's find when these ones end. Can I use arrow keys? I can. Lovely. So these are- There's only one problem. Okay. Which only Keston can do. Uh, that one's gonna fail. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ignore it and instant fail it. Yeah. That's fine. We can't, we can't deal with it. This one... Um, oh, wow. He's only got plus 8. Ooh. Plus 8 or plus 10. That seems like it should be Jathal's. Sasana? Well, uh, ignore, I guess. Just to move it out of the way. Hands of Gold? Uh, DC 14. I'm, I think that's an Octavia. She can barely fail it. So that one has to be Jathal. Forest Fae. The circus then becomes Jubilost. Oh, but then we have Dead Man's Chest. Never mind. Oh, these are... They move into there? Wait. Yeah, they move into there when they're failed. So the circus... So it's the sick. The sick. And that's uh, Jubilost and... Dethal. Okay. And that is Jubilost and Dethal. And that's Jubilost and the Fall. These are all the sixth, right? Yeah, what's the DC? 27, 17, 21. Okay, I'm going to send Jubilos to do this one because it's actually possible. Right. Uh, and then this one's getting failed. Yeah, I'm just going to fail them when I know that they're failed. So that's 14 days for Jubilos. Okay. It's 13 for Octavia. And it's 13 for Jathal. Okay, right. Let's leave here. Uh, and see... Now, is there a quest I want to go on? Reforged Blade. Yes, I want to do the Six Bears tribe. Obviously. Right. Let's head out. I was sure there was going to be a quest to go on. Like, I remember there being a quest. Oh, I should also check in with the Storyteller. I don't think we picked up anything important, but... Uh, any worthy of a story? Oh, no, we got a Sky Metal Cogwheel for 300 gold pieces. Woo. Right, see ya. Yeah. Uh, not really anything special there. Right. Uh, so we go to the merchant, we sell some more magic items, then we buy some more BP, and we head out. Well, yeah. We don't necessarily even need to buy any BP at this point. We're still over a thousand, which is absolutely fine. The only people we could send to do things are Tristian, Amiri, and... Wait, is Magyar finished? No, Magyar is still doing his. Uh, Magyar has six days to go. Yes. So the only people we could send out are Miri and Tristian, and I have nothing that I immediately want them to build. So that's fine. Okay. Just want to make sure that we're still moving the kingdom side of things on, which we are slowly moving that on still. Let us be careful. Uh, what are our quests on the kingdom side of things? Just to check. Reach rank 8. Annexation. Increase the rank of stats, reach an upgrade, and yeah, okay. So, we're still working on all of them, basically. Hey, Asuf. Uh, yeah, yes, so I want to sell you the shock dagger and the burning amulet. Cool. Right. That seems fine. Potentially that, this one doesn't actually scale up, I just realized, to... No, that one doesn't scale up. Hellfire Ray scales up, but we don't have Hellfire Ray. Okay, never mind. Uh, we don't actually have anything that scales up. Here, uh, let's swap out Knock Knock for uh, Amiri and you got yourself a squad. 
Cool. Right. Uh, and then we want to just go to wherever her thing is. And we did finish a teleportation thing as well, which is quite nice. I think we still want to go up to Armos, though. Yeah. I think we want to go up to Armos in the northwest. Because uh, it's the Six Bears camp we need to go to, right? Um, bring the sword to the Six Bears tribe. Does it say where it is? Ghost revealed to Amiri where he's holding the tribe. Uh, yes, but did he reveal to us? Abandoned Six Bears? Oh, Six Bears camp up here? I think it's this one. Yeah, it's got to be this one. Although there are two new events, so there's a new event on each of those, which is interesting. Let's do a quick scan. Nope. Okay. Uh, oh, also we got, um, we revealed everything that's on the map that's missing from these ones. So anything that we've got that's new? No, we, we actually discovered nothing new in the North Nile Marches or the South Nile Marches, meaning we did actually discover everything already, so I just wasted 100 BP and 30 days time. Okay, so Six Bears Camp is where we need to go, I think. So uh, we'll do a teleport over to... That's a lowercase v. Oh, that's that's tilting. Right, um... Over here? Yeah, Six Bears Camp. Eight hours, not too bad. What's this one? Oh, that's a Rastal's Blessing. Of course. That's good. Right. Uh, quick save before we enter, although I think it doesn't auto-save before you enter anyway. And let's enter. Let's see what's going on. It's nice to be back out after doing a bit of kingdom management. So, yeah, should be good. And... This looks like the right place. Yep. We've arrived at the right time. Ooh, it said Amiri's sword is reforged. Does that mean it's actually reforged? It's not as good as her glaive. Have a look. Same damage as her glaive, actually. Better critical as well, or better critical chance. We could always have her use our mags, though. Anyway, um. We'll have her use that sword for just now. We may use have her use our mags if things go very wrong. But we'll see. Right. Throw ourselves out like that. Good. I like the matching cloaks. No matching helmets, but that's fine. Staglord's helmet is very impressive. They do both have unique helmets, which is cool. Right. Are these... Oh, they're all skeletal champions, basically. Amiri, you little thief, mortal fool, interfering in the affairs of eternal beings. It is time to return what was stolen. Shove it! Amiri throws the sword at the ghostly giant who catches it and gazes upon it, twirling it in his huge palms. Fine work. You surprise me, mortals. Your life is but a breath in the wind, a snowflake in a hurricane. But, nevertheless, you can, at times, create something that will last through the ages. This sword is even finer than the one that was stolen. Who are you? My name is Feon. Once my brother Cain, Akin, and I were powerful rulers of the First World. Together, we were nearly equal to the Eldest, but not quite. Eternal, serene life in our land was not enough for Keen. He wanted more. He wanted to become equal to the Eldest and conquer new lands. First, he began to devour our subjects, drawing on their strength. And then he tried to do the same with me. As punishment, I banished his soul into the sword, which later fell into the hands of Amiri. Why do you need the sword? It is the prison of my beloved, hated brother Keen, the murderer of family and friends, a ruler who dreamed of great power, but who instead destroyed the people he ruled. You nearly released Keen by breaking the sword, and he may yet free himself. The sword is not sealed, but do not be afraid, mortals. We have here everything for the ritual, the ritual that will seal my brother in the sword forever. Interesting. You think he could have just explained this more calmly to the barbarians, but 
I suppose coming with skeletons and looking crazy, the barbarians probably just attacked him. How did this sword end up in Amiri's hands? My brother was very powerful. When I imprisoned him in the sword for his crimes, I created a very dangerous artifact. With sweet lies, the sword persuaded my servant to plunge it into my body. It drained much of my energy, turning me into this pitiful creature you see before you. A ghost. A shadow of my former greatness. My brother, in turn, used this power to escape into your world. But in this, he outwitted even himself. Our strength is linked to the magic of the first world. We are far less powerful here than we are in our home plane. Once here, the sword lost its strength. Even its ability to speak. It did not bring happiness to the giant who found it. It did not bring happiness to Amiri who looted the giant's corpse. Having broken the sword, you nearly freed my brother. But now we shall seal it forever. Interesting. So, minor point. Slight plot hole. Uh, we've taken Amiri to the first world and the sword did not speak. Do you have anything else to add, Fionn? I didn't think so. Why did you haunt the Six Bears tribe? After I was struck down, a treacherous spirit fled with the sword into your world. Yes, you just told me this. Powerless, a shadow of myself, I followed it, for I could not allow its prisoner to free himself. I found the body of a giant who once possessed the sword. I found the bodies of barbarians killed by Amiri. I walked invisibly among the tribe, listening to their speech and tracing their thoughts until I learned the sword's fate. I demanded the six bears fi tribe find the thief. This was only fair, for the sword was stolen by one of their own, and I would have it returned. But only Amiri listened to me at our first meeting. If only Amiri listened to me at our first meeting, much trouble could have been avoided. But even immortals cannot rule fate. Everything happened as it happened, and now the sword is in my hands. What will you do now you have the sword back? I will not avenge your theft. I never desired revenge. I only wanted to ensure my brother, imprisoned in his blade, would never break free. I once thought returning him to the first world would be sufficient, but now I realize this would not be enough. There is only one way to be sure. I will cast the spell of imprisonment once again, this time on myself. I will place the sword, I will place into the sword all my strength, which my poor brother so craved, and thus I shall share eternity with him. The sword will become our common tomb. After that, Amiri, you may keep the sword for yourself, but not before the ritual is over. Wait, so all these troubles could have been avoided if we simply talked when we first met? That is to say, if somebody hadn't started swinging their sword around without even a chat, well done, Amiri, well done indeed. Don't laugh, no. In the hands of fate, we are all but toys, both mortal and gods alike. One word said today can create or destroy a kingdom over the course of a century. It has happened before and will again. What happens if you don't seal the sword? My brother will free himself. He is an endless storm, greedy, cruel, unpredictable. He will do great evil, and he will start with Amiri and her tribe. He remembers you well, but I cannot see his mind. Perhaps he will seek revenge. Perhaps you will become his plaything. Either way, you will not survive. Alright, begin the ritual. The giant brings the sword to his lips, whispering a spell. A stream of light flows from him into the blade. Already transparent, the ghost becomes barely visible. The end is near. There is nothing left of me. I am a shadow of a shadow. I am dust and ash. My power. My immortality. I give everything to imprison my brother forever. There is only one thing left. The giant hands the sword to Amiri. To finish the ritual, the sword must be plunged into the heart of a chieftain. I would give my own heart, but I no longer possess a living body. However, there is another chieftain here. Do this, Amiri, and let eternity come to an end. Nalok comes forward. Fionn spoke truly of the threat of his brother's release. I must protect my tribe. Do it, Amiri. I am ready. Ikea pushes her away. Step aside, girl. The tribe needs you. 
Hey you, evil spirit. A former chieftain is good enough, right? The ghost nods, and Ikea thrust himself forward. Come, girl, strike. At least I'm good, still good for something. And Mary falls back, turning pale. No, no, I won't do it. She turns to you. What is this? What should I do? Sacrifice me. <laughs> Wait, really? I mean... There is no other button to click, right? I have to see what happens. Because if it happens the way I think it happens, the game ends. So, yeah, we need to reload afterwards. But I'm also your chief, and you call me your chief. Sacrifice me. I was once called, Amiri says thoughtfully, then turns to her fellow tribesmen. Hey, man, before my exile, when I kicked your butt, you gave me a nickname, remember? Come on, say it out loud. I won't beat you for it this time. The men glance at each other. One of them hesitantly says, The soft chieftain? Ha! Your words, not mine. Hey, you, ghost fee. You got uh, ghost faith. You got your chief. With these words, Amiri places the hilt of the sword on the ground below her and throws herself on the blade. Excuse me? <laughs> what? Such nobility is rare among mortals. It should not be wasted. I still have enough strength for one spell. <gasps> Ooh! She's back! The ritual is over, brother. I'm coming. Amiri rises to her feet. She touches her smooth skin through the hole in her bloody clothes, then grips the hilt of her sword. Ha! Huh, still alive, ain't I? She turns to her former tribesman. I paid all my debts. Live and obey the lock. The barbarian approaches you, a triumphant grin spreading slowly across her face. Well, chief, we won. Where to next? To the first world or right into the abyss? Together we can smash anyone and anywhere. Amiri? Hmm? <laughs> She she is. Uh, as that's a new there's a new scar on her face, but she has been resurrected. Ooh, that is okay. So reforged blade to start with. The ghost that haunted Amiri's tribe has returned. Holding them hostage, he demanded that Amiri repair the sword that was broken by Armag and return it to him. It turns out all this time he was the brother of an evil ghost, the, another spirit, even more evil and ghostly. He's been trapped inside the sword. When the barbarian did as he demanded, she had to make a frightful choice, but she passed the test of honor once and for all and put an end to the feud between her and her native tribe. Okay. Oh, so she's gone from kind of uh, carrying against the wolves to fighting the wolves. And using the wolves. Okay, I like it. But, did she get something for this? For being brought back to life? That's what I wanted to have a look at. No, nothing for being brought back to life. That's fine. Did she already have fast movement? I think she did. Yeah. Uh, okay, so nothing new for that. Okay, kind of expected. But if we have a look at um, her new item, I can already see. 6 to 20, oversized, plus 4 enhancement, and furious. What's furious? A furious weapon serves as a focus for its wielder's anger. When the wielder is raging or under the effect of a raid spell, the weapon's enchantment Enhancement bonus is plus two better than normal. Ooh. That's going to make it plus 25. Which means it's objectively better than her uh, Flaming Glaive plus two. Okay. Armag Sword. Armag Sword is technically better. Unless she's raging. But it also has speed so she can attack an extra time. Which actually kind of cheats a little bit. Because it gives her one extra damage. Also, it's got a whole bunch of other stuff that it can do. But, right now, her sword, actually kind of an equal. And better in most situations. I like it. I really like it. Okay, so Miri, she's all set. I'm listening. Yeah, we need some heals, please. That was awesome. I like that it rewarded you for doing the choice that was like, you, you, like, you got a way, way around this. I like that. That was cool. We found a loophole, and the game was like, all right, but well, we're going to give you a better loophole. I'll go ahead. Hello, Nalak. Amiri, that was my duty. 
Enough complaining. Your duty is to take care of these dumb heads. Without you, they wouldn't survive in the south. And you can't go north anymore. I had a blood debt to this tribe. I would not want the daughter of someone I killed to come take their revenge on me. You paid your debt in full. The whole tribe owes you their lives. Well... Um, Nunlok, you did not hesitate to sacrifice yourself to save the tribe. This is an act of a true leader. Thank you. It's an honor for me to hear your praise. A time of great change has come to your tribe. Everything changes. It's foolish to believe we can hide from the whole world in our icy mountains. We paid dearly for pretending that time didn't touch us. Or doesn't touch us. I'm afraid the other tribes will pay even more. What are you going to do next? Let's go back to Numeria. We're not used to change. Even there, everything seems strange to us. But Numerian Kelad's not so different from the northern ones. We would not survive here in the River Kingdoms, even with your protection. Farewell. Desna bless you. Look after Amiri. And Chieftain Akea? You ruined the tribe, but then you saved it. <laughs> okay, well, you know, that's a good summary. Uh, I'm not going to loot the tribe. We've already looted this area. Let's head out. Yeah, I just remembered we've already been here and looted it. Right, well, we're heading out. I, I really did like that. And I do like when the music comes in to be like, you're ending a... You're ending a quest line. It's really neat. Okay. So quest lines we got left? We, yeah, we've not got that many, have we? Okay. Well, I think that uh, we're going to end the episode here. And next time we're going to maybe do a few of the... We're maybe going to do like one or two of these on the way back. And then probably more time in the capital, I'd imagine. Yeah, we can't do that one. 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 Yeah, more time in the capital, I guess. Skip time. Cool. Well, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.